Hello, my amazing Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. A, and I love math. And tonight, we're doing the start of Lesson 4 of our Algebra 1 Orange Book. But we're not going to do all of Lesson 4, because Lesson 4 is, like, huge. So we're going to do half of Lesson 4, and then tomorrow we'll do the other half of Lesson 4, because it's late, and I don't want to stay up forever. Okay, so here in the very first part of lesson four, they're making a very important distinguishing point here between the word number and the word numeral. Number is an idea, and it is an idea of value, which we will talk about down here. But it is an idea. The numeral represents the idea. Okay, so here if we're talking about the numeral 3 and the idea of the number 3, we could draw the number 3 in several different ways. We could have three pencils or three children or three um, apples. But I'm not an artist, so I drew three balls. Okay, but here is the numeral 3 that represents the idea or the concept of 3. So the numeral three expresses the idea that is the value three, okay? So here are different ways that we could write the numeral three. A three, a Roman numeral three, 30 over 10 is three, one plus two is three, okay? So those are going to all be ways to represent the concept of three. So notice what it says, all numerals here have the same value. And so value can be equated to this word number, okay? So a number is the idea, which is the amount of value that something has. So they're just trying to get some terminology squared away here. In 4B, we're talking about the natural numbers and the decimal system, they're talking about it for a little bit because it contains our natural numbers. So we're just learning a little bit about our number system. So we use the decimal system, which was created um, by the Hindus in India, and it has 10 symbols, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and um, we refer to these numbers as the natural or counting numbers. Now, these numbers go on. These are your 10 digits, but we can use the 10 digits to make a long string of digits. All right, so if we started here at 1, and we said 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and this dot, dot, dot means we're going to continue on and on forever, then we could go all the way up to 100 and then past 100 to 200 and then 300, 400, 5,000, 6 million, 7 billion. We could just keep on going, can't we? All right. So the natural numbers or the counting numbers are the numbers that we first start counting with. Now, just imagine that you were a little baby again and your mother was counting out your toys for you. And she would say, well, little Michael, here's one toy and here's two toys and here's three toys, and your mother's trying to teach you how to count. She doesn't start with five, and she doesn't start with one half or even zero. When we start to count, we start with one. Okay, so the counting numbers or the natural numbers start with one. One, two, three, four, five, as we would naturally start counting. So that's why we call them the natural numbers or the counting numbers because they are the numbers that you would naturally start counting with. So we're classifying numbers here and we're going to next talk about real numbers. Now we're going to talk about real numbers and we're also going to talk about the number line in the next section. Real numbers and the number line go together because a real number is a number that belongs on 
the real number line. So notice that my line has two directions. It has a zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're kind of used to seeing this much right here on our rulers, aren't we? But we don't usually see negative numbers on our ruler. and We might not even see a zero on our ruler. It just may start the ruler. But we're used to working with positive numbers. But we have to realize that there's a whole nother side to the number line that goes off into negative numbers. And the concept of negative numbers is very important as you get older because um, we need to understand that sometimes we owe somebody some money, don't we? We owe um, mom $15 because she bought us a favorite game at the store when she was there and we said mom I don't have $15 but I owe you $15 so we could say that we are $15 in the hole and we have a debt of $15 so we could represent that money that we have as negative $15 I not only don't have any money but I owe somebody else $15 so we would be negative Fifteen dollars in the um, would be the amount of money that we have. So here on the right hand side we have positive real numbers because a real number is any number that fits on here and over here on the left we have negative real numbers and zero which is in the middle of all this is not positive or negative. Zero has no sign so when we're looking at these, let's look at some of the numbers. We say, well, you only have the big numbers, one, two, three, four, five, sitting on there. Those are the natural numbers, and well, those would be, well, zero is not a natural number, but zero and these numbers over here, those are called whole numbers. These would be the negative whole numbers, positive and the negative whole numbers. We could say that, but what about all these other numbers? What about three-fourths? Is three-fourths on my number line? Yes, it is. But it's not labeled, but it's still there. So three-fourths would be right there, right before one. And eleven-sevenths. Well, eleven-sevenths is between one and two. So that would be, let's think about our remainders here. That would be eleven divided by seven would be one and four left over, right? So one and four left over would be right there. One and four sevenths. And then 363, is that on my number line? Well, remember this arrow goes on and on and on forever? So 363 is way, way, way out there on the other side of my um, car over there in the driveway, but it's still on this line right? And then 0 0.005. Wow, that's a really tiny number, but it would be just a tiny hair to the right of zero, wouldn't it? So all of these numbers, the fractions, the decimals, all of these numbers that are in between, both positive and negative, are real numbers. Okay, so um, if we have a number that has no sign, then we know it's positive, okay? Um, zero has no sign, and it's neither positive nor negative. But all the other numbers, if you see no sign, it will be positive. So now we're going to move into talking about this number line more. The real number line is going to be a huge part of our trip through Algebra 1 here. Alright, just a little bit more about our number line and then we're going to move on to fractions. So here we have another picture of our number line and remember the number line is not only these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 0 and negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 but all of the numbers in between them also. Okay, these are just what I call the big hooks. There's, all, there's an infinite number of numbers in between each one. Okay, if we were going to list these, we're going to call this whole number set that we see here is the integers. We'll learn more about them later. But um, the number line 
has an infinite number of numbers on the number line and an infinite number of numbers just in between there. Do you believe me? Okay, well, cut zero and one in half, and what do you get? One half. And then you take that one half and you put it right there and you cut it in half again. So we'll cut that one in half. We got one-fourth, and then we cut it in half again. Got one-eighth, we cut it in half again. One-sixteenth, we cut it in half again. One over thirty-two, and it just keeps on going and on, going forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And we can never exhaust the ability to cut it in half again. Now, with my marker, I'm not going to be able to show it, but it's still there in concept or idea. And remember, that's what a number is, a concept or an idea, right? So, we're talking about our number line. We graph by placing a dot. So when we're graphing a number, we will um, place a dot, and then the number value of that dot is called the coordinate. So greater numbers are to the right, and lesser numbers are to the left. So if I said graph the number three, so we would put a dot on the numeral three, standing for the number three, but that three is the coordinate of that graph. Okay, so <clears throat> graph and coordinate, and then um, lesser numbers are to the left, and now every number on the number line has an opposite. So here's a two, and here's a negative two, and they are opposites of either, each other. The definition of an opposite is two numbers that when added together give you zero. That's an opposite. So two and negative two are opposites. Five and negative five are opposites. Okay, so we don't see five, but do we know five is there? Because five would be here, but what about six? Six would be right there. And that arrow tells us it keeps on going forever and ever. Amen. This last section that we're going to do tonight, remember I'm cutting this section in half um, because it goes all the way through section J. And I'm not going to go all the way through 4J tonight. We're just going to split 4 into two sections. So we're going to go through 4E tonight and then we'll do the rest of it tomorrow night. So on 4E, we're talking about multiplication and division of fractions, and this is a review for you, hopefully, but I'm going to go through each little part, and hopefully that will jog your memory on how to uh, multiply and divide fractions. Remember when we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators, we multiply the denominators, canceling when we can. Now this one, we can't cancel anything, so we're going to multiply straight across the top, and we're going to get 28. We're going to multiply straight across the bottom and get 15. But we usually will take that number, 28 over 15, and turn it into a mixed number. As we move through algebra, sometimes we don't. We leave it improper, and that's okay for algebra, but right now, they're still having you turn it into an improper fraction. So now we're going to say 28 divided by 15. 15 goes in only one time. So we're going to say one whole, and then 28 minus the 15 we just took out is going to be 13. So we have 1 and 13 fifteenths, and that is the correct answer for that one. Now let's look at this one. Now we have a division. Remember when we divide by a fraction, we flip and turn it to multiplication. So we always do that with the second fraction, never the first one. And I'll show you why as you get to be a little bit 
um, we go into math a little bit more. But right now, we always flip the second one, and we're going to have 4 thirds times, and sometimes we use that little dot. I don't know if you've done that before, but times can be a little dot also. Times 8 over 15. So we flip that around. We look real hard to see if there's anything that we can cancel, and there's not. So we're going to end up with 4 times 8 is 32, 3 times 15 is 45, and that would be our final answer on that one. So now we have just about four more problems, and then we'll be done with this section for tonight. So here we have 7 over 3 and 30 over 9. Well, we could cancel the 30 with the 3 or the 30 with the 9. I'm going to cancel the 30 with the 3. Anytime I have something on the numerator, I can cancel it with a denominator. Okay, so the 30 and the 3 will cancel with a 1 and a 10 because I'm dividing both of them by 3. And then I look around and there's nothing else I can do. And I get 70 divided by 9, which is improper, so I'm going to turn it into a mixed number. And 70 divided by 9, well, I know that 63 is a multiple of 9, and I can't go any higher, so we're going to say 7, because 9 times 7 is 63. 7, and then I have 7 left over, 7 ninths. And that would be my answer and is the correct answer. The next problem is this one. I have three um, that we're going to multiply together. So these, um, if you look carefully though, we have some cool factoring that's going to go on here. Turn this just a little bit to get the glare off. Okay, so we have some cool factoring. We could cancel the 3 with the 6, but then I would have to divide both by 3 and get a 1 and a 2. I can cancel the 5 and the 5, just leaving 1s. And then I have only got a 2, a 21, and a 23. So now the 2 and the 23 are on the bottom. I multiply those together and get a 46 on the bottom and a 21 on the top because everything else is a 1 and 21 over 46 is my answer. The next one we have here is a multiplication of mixed numbers. Now we know that when we have mixed numbers we have to turn them into improper fractions before we can multiply them. Okay, so we're going to turn this into an improper fraction. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So that becomes 5 halves times 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16 thirds. Now we look at it and say, can we cancel anything? And we can because we have a 2 and a 16, once in the denominator, once in the numerator. So let's cancel a 2 from this one and cancel out a 2 from this one, leaving an 8. And that's all I can do. So I'm going to get 5 times 8 is 40, divided by 1 times 3 is 3, and 40 divided by 3, that's going to, that's improper. So 40 divided by 3 would be... 13, because 13 times 3 would be 39 and 1 third. So 13 and 1 third would be the final answer. That is correct. Two more problems. Okay, so this is the F problem in your book at the bottom of page 17. So now we're going to look at this problem and say, what can I do? First of all, I must get them into improper form. So 12 times 3 is 36 plus 1 is 37 thirds. And divided by, let's go ahead and leave the division for just a second because I want to make sure I, I don't make any mistakes. 12 plus 1 is 13 over 
six. So now I've got everything in proper form. In proper form, I'm ready to go ahead and flip and multiply. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with 37 over 3 times, and now I have to flip this one, 6 over 13. Now, what's going to cancel? My 3 and my 6 will cancel with a 2 and a 1. Nothing else cancels, does it? So now I'm going to end up with 2 times 37, which is going to be 74. And then on the bottom, I just have a 13. And 74 divided by 13 is going to go 5 times. Because 5 times 13 is 65. And then we'll have 9 thirteenths left. And that should be the correct answer. And it is. And we're down to the last one. And we have a vertical form of a division. Again, we need to put it, I would put it into the horizontal form, and I would also turn it into improper fractions. So 3 and 1 third is 9 plus 1 is 10 thirds, divided by 10 plus 1 is 11 fifths, now we're going to flip and multiply 10 thirds times 5 elevenths. Is anything going to cancel? No. If we'd had the 5 downstairs, it would. But we have the 5 and the 10 both upstairs. So nothing cancels. So we're going to end up with a 50 over 33. 33 will go into 50 one time, and so we'll get 1 and 17 30 thirds, and that is the correct answer, and we are done with half of Lesson 4. We will be back with the other half of Lesson 4 tomorrow. This is Mrs. A, and may God bless your day.